So I'm trying to finish up Big Red. Now, all I really got to do is put the uh, shocks in as well as the uh, airbags and basically just piece everything back together. Um, here is the old shock. I think the new ones are over there already, but we've got four grade eight bolts, which you can tell they're grade eights by looking at the marks on top. If they're six, that means it's grade eight. Basically, um, you take how many marks are on there and add two and that's the grade. Um, grade eights are pretty darn strong. So uh, I'm gonna take the bolts over there and we're going to put them on. Now look at this bolt. This is a grade five because there's three marks on the top. I don't know how well you can see it. So I need a washer on each end and a lock nut. There we go. So here is the shock. What had happened was the bolt had gotten rusted to this little inner, inner uh, bushing here and uh, we couldn't get them off so we had to grind them out. So now we're going to just slide them back on. Shouldn't really be that difficult. They extend and retract fairly easy. There, followed by the nut. Of course. There we go. That took a whole 30 seconds to do. It's too bad taking them off didn't take that much time. But uh, let's go do the other side now. We're standing by Big Red. We just have to put the last airbag on and tighten down the shocks and then we should be good to let the cab back down. So I got the other one installed as you can see there. Um, wasn't too bad. I have the cab jacked up right now. It's a little bit too high. Maybe I should let it down a little bit. But um, what I'm gonna do is put some thread tape on this hose over here because this is the air supply line. I'm gonna stick it down through the hole underneath the cab that goes down to the airbag and that way I can set the airbag right in there and I can tighten it out here and then I can just drop the cab on it. What I tried to do before when I took it off was I had held the crescent wrench up here and um, I unscrewed the air hose from this side which was incredibly painful and uh, just it just wasn't doable. So um, just by setting the airbag in there and dropping the cab down should be fairly straightforward. So let's go ahead and put the other one on. The sound of silence is music to my ears. So, got the bags inflated, those are good. Shocks on, that leaves the air horns whenever I get those in the mail. I uh, hope I didn't get conned out of my money. Kind of weird they haven't shipped yet, but eh, whatever. Um, what else we got going? Oh, uh, we just got the gear oil as well, so um, we're probably gonna do that next. Uh, other than that, this truck is pretty well ready to go. Um, whenever it, whenever the snow melts again, and we can actually back the trailer up into here, then we'll start work on that. 
Um, but I'm actually pretty satisfied with how everything went on the truck. Uh, we saved roughly probably 1500 bucks so far just on labor. Um, all in all, by the time we're done, it will probably have saved about 2500 bucks in labor. So pretty good so far. I just ordered a suspension valve for the rear end. Might be able to hear it hissing still. Back in the cab of Big Red today, folks, we're looking at the blower for the cab, or the sleeper. So this is a separate heater, you could say, just for the kit, for the sleeper. And uh, the control is back here, you can't see it now. But um, we we're trying to get the lights to work, the chicken lights to work on Big Red. And we followed the cable that powered the lights back inside because the lights weren't working anyway. Uh, Dad's working on those now. We actually have them working and he's tying them all together and we're going to run a new line up to the fuse box, which is right underneath the console there. So hopefully th those will be a little bit more reliable. And um, I followed the wire back up into the cab and saw that he spliced in to one of these wires. So I pulled out. This wasn't even hooked up. So this is... This goes back to the blower, right there. I hooked it up and I wanted to try to see if it works. So let's turn the key on. So now the front blower is on. I don't know whether or not that has to be on. Probably not. But all right. So now there should be power back here. Now, when I take this, seeing where he spliced into it, I should be able to touch these wires together and the blower should run. This may not be the most recommended way to do this, but whatever. So there you can hear it running. So that's good news. Um, do I think I'll ever need to, to use this? No, but uh, just having the truck back closer to its original condition and not having um, what splices everywhere and power being rerouted. Uh -huh. Nothing. I'm talking to the camera. Oh, oh. So, uh, yeah, by not having all this power rerouted, rerouted in places where it shouldn't go, um, I'll be happier. And then the chicken lights will work hopefully better. Um, we are actually having an issue where there's six lights. Maybe there's seven. Um, on each side of the cab. Well, on the driver's side, the one in the very middle was having issues. It was only getting about half as bright as it should be. So what I'm kind of like, what I think happened is when he originally hooked this up, it worked. But uh, as time went on, maybe the ground wasn't as good. And one of the, the metal lights stopped working and we couldn't figure it out for the life of us. But what we actually decided was, well, here's the funny part. It was the light that was in the middle. They were all strung together and the one in the middle wasn't working. The ones on the end were, end were but um, yeah, we uh, tried hooking that the power cable up to the battery charger and we figured out that there wasn't it wasn't getting enough volts. So for some reason that was causing the middle light to go out, which I find kind of strange, but at least we have the problem solved. Um, working on that next. I just replaced the suspension valve for the rear end, um, the leveling valve. I'll show you that later, but um, yeah, I'm gonna cut some wires here and try to get everything ready for dad when he can come through and he can splice it together because he's split. He's working on splicing the chicken lights right now. And uh, I don't know if we have any more solder or not, but anyway, um, next task is going to be hooking, looking into the dash again, trying to find some more air leaks under there. 
Uh, we fired the truck up after fixing the air leak on the rear end and the airbags have not moved at all, which is really, really good. Uh, means we're solving those air leak problems and um, that means that I can shut the truck off, not lose air, and then turn it back on again and be able to move. Like, let's say I'm sitting at the grain elevator and I think that I'm gonna be sitting there a while, I shut the truck off and um, yeah, the line moves again, then I can start it back up. The problem that I was having before is that every time you shut the truck off, you'd have to sit and let it recharge for another five minutes at least. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna keys off. So, so this was cannibalized off there. These were unhooked. This was unhooked. I'm gonna leave it hooked in just because that's the way it should be. I wanna clean out some of the stuff that is in here. I found a harmonica. That was kind of cool. So you guys just missed all of the fun. So I broke into the dash on Big Red. Um, this was originally a fact-finding mission to find the source of the air leaks under the dash, which I did find. Um, I tore into it. it. I didn't tear into it this much at first, but I uh, basically just took the top cover off here and I uh, heard a leaking around this air cylinder. Um, the hose went into the air cylinder right there and it must have been clamping it too hard or something like that over time. Uh, they just start to leak. And I cut the end off, reinserted it. Doesn't seem to leak anymore. Um, I'm pretty sure this air cylinder was in backwards. I'm not totally sure though. Um, I'll have to wait and see until we can get some more air pressure in here to figure that out. But I'm pretty sure it's supposed to retract and then it's supposed to come out. Um, it's supposed to kind of turn this way a little bit. But uh, don't know for sure. Uh, as I was wrapping that up, um, there was another air leak on the end of that. And it was this little T down there. So I took the front cover off here and exposed that. I cut the one end off, but realized that all three of the other ends, including the one that I cut off, still leaked. So I'm gonna go get a new one of those tomorrow. And um, that was another source. In the process of doing that, you'll see this little box up here. Well, this is supposed to be loaded with air. You may notice there's a hole in the top. If I can find the thing, I'll show you what it is. Now, I'm pretty sure this is a, ouch. Ooh. One second, all right. So I'm pretty sure this is like a air pressure sensor. And um, you may notice that one of the connectors is missing. Well, apparently I broke that. Um, I knew that it wasn't in there very well because when we opened up the dash last time, it was bent at almost a 90 degree angle. So we tried bending it straight. Um, it was kind of loose on there. You know, it bent a little bit too easy back to where it should have been. When I opened it back up again, it was bent again. So um, yeah, broke off. Not sure. Must have been sometime when I was working on it, but I'm going to go get a new one of these. And in the process of doing that, it, the last two days have mostly, mostly just been like, you fix one thing and then like three more go wrong. Just ask dad. Um, he's been working on the uh, chicken lights and he's kind of had his hands full. Um, basically, we were having too much of a voltage drop. He wired all the lights up together, both sides, and we we're gonna run a single wire up to the front underneath the dash up here and um, wired it up that way because how he had it was wired up to the heater in the back. Well, when he connected them and he tied them up to the battery charger to test them, uh, the one side that he plugged it into closest, like let's say he put the battery charger on eh, the, the left side, then the left side lights would work and the ones on the right would be like probably at 25 to 30% brightness. Um, so he brought the battery charger over on this side of the truck and attached them and he still had the same issue except it was just flip-flopped. So. Um, the game plan right now is to run two separate lines um, up front. That way, hopefully, there won't be too much of a voltage drop by the time the wire gets up here. But anyway, looking back in here, after I had solved 
figured out that it was leaking at that T. Then I discovered a new leak down below behind the AC controller, which is supposed to be right there. Now you'll see these two wires right here. Someone has obviously done this before. Um, the AC switch, which I'll show you in a moment, um, was wired up wrong. These two, uh, well, these, these were backwards. There's, they're supposed to be clipped in and they weren't clipped in because they were inserted oppositely. So, um, I know when I go to hook it back up that those should be wired right. But um, I'm trying to think of what else, what other problems we had in here. So we're trying to figure out why the defrosters weren't working because we've gone through and we've fixed all these air cylinders that control the defrosters and um, it, we just can't control them. No matter what, when the truck is turned on, it's not sending the air up there. Well, it's kind of counterintuitive to have fixed the air cylinders, but not be able to send air up onto the windshield. So we fought with that to get that out. I'm gonna not have a good time putting all that back together. <laughs> but uh, I'll just go show you what what's going on here. I'm trying to think of anything. I'm about to go home. I'm calling it quits for the night because they have three more uh, AC switches uh, at Truck Country, but. Uh, I'm gonna go get them in the morning. So, yeah, shut the dash light off. So, what originally started out as a, I don't know, we just kind of wanted to figure out why, or we wanted to unplug the little green one here. And the green one was leaking air like crazy, so we were gonna cut it off. But the problem is it wouldn't come out, as you can probably tell there. And uh, in the process, we're like, you know, something's going on there. We tried figuring out what kind of unit this was because as it was sitting inside the truck, we could not see the electrical switch. So we took it out, fought with it. And uh, at first glance, you may think that, you know, you can't really see anything wrong here other than the fact that there's no hoses in it. But uh, when I flip it, you'll notice that there's a gap in here. Now, I'm pretty sure this plastic piece and this plastic piece are supposed to be touching and uh, connected, but I'm pretty sure they're broke. Actually, I know for a fact they're broke, but uh, it seems like the, this just filled with junk and just stuff from mostly insulation from the dash of the truck and uh, it clogged up. Someone must have forced it open or closed and it broke it. Well, this was forced all the way ahead. So whenever we were trying to go to flip the defroster, it wasn't working. So I just called up Truck Country. They have a new, actually three of these in stock. And um, uh, I think they're $56 for this whole thing. So I'm gonna go pick that up tomorrow, try putting everything back together and um, just kind of go from there. And hopefully that'll have solved the defroster problem. But uh, yeah, here's everything on the back of the truck. We took out the backup utility light and um, I'm gonna order a new one of those. We're gonna try to get both floodlights working. Might just switch this one out for an LED. Um, but I decided that I wanted to have those on there just because there's a spot for them, so why not? More light, the better. So um, I'm gonna make a run to truck country in the morning and continue this video with that. Um, but. Yeah, I just thought I'd kind of get you guys up to date on what's going on. Um, it's kind of been a fight every step of the way. But I think once we get to the trailer, things will get a little bit easier because with the truck, I mean, working on the rear end was nothing. It really wasn't that bad. We still have to fill the rear end up with oil. But um, I filled it up with air today, or I started the truck up after I replaced the suspension valve. And you can see... If you know what you're looking for, that the cabin airbags are still fully inflated. And these are right where I left them as well. So the truck is definitely holding air um, on the primary air tank, but on the secondary, um, which is underneath the dash, I assume. Um, we're still working on getting all those loose ends tied up. So anyway, uh, meet, see you guys in the morning. So I went on a parts run to truck country this morning and I got all new parts for the AC switch. 
I got the air pressure sensor, which is right there. Hopefully this one's doesn't break off quite as easily. Then uh, here's the new AC switch. You can tell the part on top moves just like I predicted. Uh, it doesn't really seem like that good of, a, good of a design to me, but I was talking to an older guy down there um, who's also getting parts for his, and he said that this design looks better than what they have for uh, the newer ones because they're all electric, and when you start to have issues there, he says it's not pretty. So, But I'm going to go ahead and slap this in there, make sure that everything works, and then uh, go from there, try slapping the dash back together. I don't want to wait too long because there's a whole lot of different size screws that go into that dash. I'm not totally sure. Uh, that I, I'm not totally sure I'll remember how to put it all back together if I wait more than a few days. So, all right, let's start putting this back together. Oh, I also bought a new utility light for the back. So this one was pretty well shot. It had parts that were broken on the inside. So that looks good as new. Um, we're gonna keep the LEDs on the back. But uh, after this, I'm going to work on getting the air horns put back on, which probably will be in another video. So this is supposed to plug on to there, but you can tell that it's broken off on the inside and I can't get at it with a needle nose pliers. So I'm gonna try to uh, wedge it out with a screwdriver. Let's see if that works. I've been trying, I've used a knife and everything and I haven't been able to get it out yet, but I found a uh, hooked, flat screwdriver I don't believe it's supposed to be like that but uh looks like someone exerted some force on it previously but I think it's going to be the perfect tool for for this Ooh, that's working like a charm so I've got enough of it exposed now I can take the needle, needle nose and yank it out there we go all right, that should be everything. Let's go ahead and fire it up. It'll have to build pressure before we can operate the defrost. All right, let's see what the damage is. So I know there's still an air leak. coming from this. So we gotta replace that air cylinder as well. Crap. But it seems like all the other issues are solved. This is what it seems it's supposed to do. See, now it's starting to leak. So it seems like something out of that's going bad. Uh, we, took it to, we took it off and tried fixing it yesterday, but it's still leaking now apparently. So I'm just gonna go get a whole new air, air cylinder. Having a truck with a dash isn't that important. Right? Now you may be wondering how I got in this situation. Um, basically, Freightliner made some questionable design choices back in the day and you could not take out the dash valves which are right here without taking out the whole dash and I can tell so because basically as I've been taking these bolts out and everything they look fresh they look new someone's replaced them before so I what I think happened is that someone did some valve work back here but they didn't change the dash valves themselves because this unit is pretty darn old. Um, it's in, I don't think it's the dash valve at this point that's bad, but there's a green hose underneath. I don't know if you can even see it, but it's leaking and you can tell it's leaking because there's moisture under there. And it's pretty much just causing condensation or oil to get all over everything else underneath. And that's something that I don't really want to have happen. So I'm gonna start working on taking these valves off uh, I got three there. I got that red line in the back to take off. I don't know how I'm gonna differentiate between those when I go to put them back on Looks like there's an orange one there 
the green one. And it looks like there's another black one underneath the red. I can't even tell at this point, but I don't know. I'm going to at least try to get the dash valve out tonight. And then tomorrow I can go get a new, new dash valve and see what the heck's going on with these hoses. You can see that green hose. Well, that's the one that's leaking. And, uh, Oh, something's going on there. But uh, it was leaking underneath to basically all those electric wires down there. So I'm gonna try to fix that, try to figure out what's wrong. I don't think it's the hose. I hope it's not the hose. I hope it's just the dash valve at this point. Pictures, need pictures. Or else I haven't got a clue how to put this thing back together. We just got it out. Here's what the dash valves look like. So the problem was on this bottom one here, it was leaking out around that 45 degree angle piece. And uh, yeah, I'm probably just gonna go get a whole nother dash valve because I'm not gonna try to put that back in there and then not resolve the issue. So I'm not totally sure how much the dash valves are, um, but I think it's worth it. And then this is the last leak that is under the dash. I know it is. I pray that it is. But uh, anyway, uh, I'm gonna go pick that up in the morning, put it back together. Uh, we're having gonna have some pretty nasty weather here in the next few days, so we have to fire the truck up and uh, fill the antifreeze up and check it to make sure that it's good because I guess that we're supposed to get like five inches of snow and it's supposed to get really cold after that and it's not supposed to get any better, so. All right, well, see you guys in the morning. All right, here goes, wish me luck. Hopefully I don't spend too much. <laughs> I just got back from Dubuque. I got the new dash valve. I got the air cylinder and a bunch of clips and adapters and other fun stuff to get me going. Now, one little thing that's different on these dash valves is that on the left, on the left here we have the old one and on the right is the new one. You'll notice there's this exhaust port and uh, essentially that blows air out of there on this one it's different so we got these an adapter on here actually a 90 degree angle with basically just a hose adapter they had the hose clamped on this one wasn't totally sure why until I found out that it was an exhaust port which does make sense so I went to uh, guys truck and tractor and they hooked me up with a hose that I can run out the firewall on the front of the truck. Hopefully, somehow, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do that. But um, run it out through there, hook it up to this, and then that way I don't have to play around with any clamps or anything. I can just use the one that's, well, I can take out the one that's on there. I don't know if I'm just gonna duct tape the ends together and try pulling it through, or if I can actually get up in there and look, I'll have to see. But, uh, yeah, just one step at a time. So I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the truck, putting things back together, and uh, wish me luck. So in my quest to replace that exhaust hose, I was always kind of wondering what this hose was that looked like it was cut off, and I just found out that, that was for a reason. So you'll see that as I shake this hose, I stuck the new hose into the old one to try to, well, just kind of, so I could see it from here. But you'll be able to see it move as I shake it down here. So that tells me I gotta take that out, push it through and figure out a way to get it back out, I don't know. Maybe I can stick the new hose in through here and then pull it out the other side. I'm about to find out. Oh boy, it's starting to snow. Gotta open up my truck so Rockin' can get in there. That's his place to go, the back of the truck. I just got done putting the new dash valves in and the new air cylinder for the defroster. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire Big Red up and see if there's an air leak now. Let's hope and pray that there isn't. And now we wait. You hear that? Me neither. <laughs> oh man, she is silent. 
Now, does anybody know how to put one of these things back together? <laughs> oh man, it's just, it feels so good knowing that she's not going to be leaking. Uh, God, it's been one thing after another. I, we, we've probably fixed at least 10 different air leaks under the dash of this thing. And uh, I'm just happy that it's finally quiet up here. So I'm gonna begin the long process of putting everything back together. Um, I think that I'm really glad that I switched out these dash valves because the last one that was on there, I don't know what it was about it, but basically every time you released it, it slapped back into your hand and it, it actually kind of hurt. This one is a lot smoother. So there you can hear the exhaust valve releasing air. And then Gucci. All right, time to start piecing it back together if I can. I'm just kind of worried because there are just so many different sizes of screws and nuts and bolts that go into this thing. It's going to be it's going to take a while to put it back together, but at least the hard part of it's done and that's figuring out where all the air leaks are coming from. All right, let's get back to work. Twas the night before posting this video, and all throughout Big Red, not a valve was leaking. Not even. My head. So that's about it for tonight. I'm going to wait until Dad's here tomorrow to help me put these switches on, and then I can put the front panel on. Still have to put the side panel on, but um, yeah, I think it's probably better if I wait, because then I don't mix any of these up. Um, on the dash, they're labeled, and one of these is the fifth wheel slide, one of them is the diff lock. Then the other one is the suspension. I don't know which one's which. But, uh, yeah, I'll be able to find that out tomorrow. So, uh, it's coming along pretty good. I got the new switches in there. Now, we lost secondary pressure. I'm not totally sure where we lost that at. But it's still holding pretty strong uh, for the primary. And that's good. That means that the airbags are still inflated. But I'm not totally sure why the secondary is going down. Um, if we lose some pressure, it's not that big a deal to me over time. Um, I don't really want it to just keep on holding the pressure forever. But uh, I'm actually pretty satisfied with how it's holding the primary pressure because before it wouldn't hold any at all. And I've been messing with the switches and I've been pressing these in and out and it's been losing air that way. I've been holding the, the trailer air in and that sends it out the back. And it's still holding pretty steady there at 60, so. But anyway, uh, continue in the next video. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Be sure to check out all of our other ones. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. All How Farms Work. If you follow us on Snapchat, you can kind of get an early glimpse. at some of the stuff I don't cover. Um, kind of the struggles that I've had with this. <laughs> um, especially putting it back together. It's kind of been a pain. But um, it's coming together pretty well. I think now I'm starting to get down to bolts that aren't quite the same but they look pretty similar so I might be struggling to put some back in their right spots so anyway she's coming together pretty good guys see you next time